Bizarre Puppy Triangle is a top-down action game made in Godot where you control two ghost puppies and fire a laser beam between them to zap enemies. I submitted the game as my entry for the Game Maker's Toolkit 2021 jam on HIO. The theme was joined together and it was revealed just as the jam started, on Friday the 11th of June at 7pm UK time. The main idea that I came up with was a game where you shoot bullets and the area between the bullets hurts enemies. I more or less had the idea of how to code it, but the bullet stuff wasn't very appealing to me. When I was still living with my parents, we always had three or four dogs at the same time, and we had to take them out with several leashes, one in each hand. This is how the definitive idea for Bizarre Puppy Triangle was born. The first visual ideas I had for the game relied very heavily on trigonometry puns. For example, I named the dogs Sine and Cosine even though Acute and Isosceles were also on the table. These names helped me come up with their visual design, mainly the wavy stuff they have at the bottom, making them look like ghosts from a hidden indie gem called Pac-Man. I decided to go for a flat, non-pixel art design for the characters, since I've recently gotten pretty used to Affinity Designer and I thought I could make as it's faster with it. In a way, it is easier, but there are some areas where I find it lacking. For example, there's no timeline editor, which makes it really hard to animate with, since you can't preview sprite sheet animations. Also, you can't replace all instances of a certain color in a single document. This makes it really unforgiving if you need to change palettes in the middle of the jam. After finishing the main character designs and adding them to Godot, I made a simple top-down controller and went to bed. The next day, I started to work on the gameplay. I first started adding the dogs as children of the player, but then realized that this would make them always move with the player, and not actually follow it. Took me a while to realize this, so I ended up placing the player and the dogs as separate instances in the world scene, as well as adding the leash. The leash was pretty easy to set up once I understood the code. I'll put the link to the code in the description. The main thing I had to change in the code was how to connect the dogs to the leash, since the original used the mouse as the positions for the start and the end of the string. I also added the send dogs to mouse location system. I then started designing the enemies and decided to use the same shape as the player but change the colors and the layout. One of the original ideas was to make holes in the ground and make the dogs be able to create bridges between them so the players would be able to cross. I started making the tiles with this in mind but then realized that there was still so much to do, like adding enemies and hitboxes and hurtboxes, that there was no time to finish it. This video was recorded at 9 o'clock in the evening of Saturday. I then added the enemy to the game and got the laser hitbox working. I added a world environment node to the laser to get some light in it and didn't realize until playing that other effects would benefit from the light as well. The next and final day, I was pretty worried about the time and how the game would feel that I barely recorded any footage. I mostly focused on the title screen, the start menu, the game over screen and their transitions. Then I added sound effects. I made the force field sound with my mouth, and the other stuff is mainly from Open Game Art and Kenny. I also added two different clips of my dog squealing when he was a baby. These crying sounds would play whenever the player died and the game over screen appeared, to make the player feel bad if he stopped playing. I made an 8 bar song on GarageBand by playing around with my keyboard and added it as a singleton to the game. I also removed the whole tile set fully knowing I wasn't going to implement the bridge system and with what I felt was the first fun loop I had, I asked a friend to play test it. He caught some bugs, as he always does with whatever I show him, and we discussed that maybe adding a new harder enemy would perhaps improve the game. After lunch, I made a new enemy that shoots bullets and runs a bit faster. After more bug fixing and polishing, I uploaded the game to itch. The most important lesson I learned in a jam, always upload games in web format if you can. I feel that uploading the game only on desktop version will severely hinder the amount of ratings I get, but oh well, at least now I know. It was a fun experience. It was the second game jam I've participated in and the first one I've done alone. For the next one, I'll try to form a team. I think I could have focused much more on gameplay and coding if I would have had someone focusing on the art. The game is pretty hard, so I've been told. The max score I've seen is 27. Give it a try if you want, links in the description.